Um, actually, this might be a good segue into my next question since we're talking a little bit about um, handwriting and versus typing. And Shannon, just to start with you, how much handwriting do you teach and use in the online classroom? I still do teach my students handwriting, and it was really interesting the other day looking at the different people's uh, opinions about, you know, how much handwriting we should do. And I can just, I, I don't think anyone is wrong or right, but I can just tell you what I do in my class, which is that I do still teach them handwriting. I think it's still important, especially for them to be able to read uh, handwriting. Um, and so I still teach it and I teach, teach it quite early, similar to what I was describing with the alphabet. I also have uh, an online activity that my students do to learn to handwrite the uh, alphabet and it's also available. Um, so the alphabet lessons, I mentioned the pre-immersion site, but there's also another place where those are available and there are a lot more things available, um, which is a website called LLC Commons. And that's a website that was supported by uh, Circle from the University of Arizona. And Ludmila Klimanova and I uh, put together this website and it's uh, it's got a whole bunch of activities. Some are mine and some are uh, hers and some of her students. Um, a lot of activities that are available for anyone to use in kind of a flipped classroom uh, sort of situation. And the handwriting lesson is available in there as well. And so you're welcome to assign it to your students to sort of give them their first uh, try or first pass at learning the uh, the handwriting. Um, so I do teach them handwriting and I do require it for a, for a little while um, and I can describe that. So in the in, in my class, uh, and I'm similar to Heather in that I mostly teach first and second year uh, Russian. In my first year class, uh, we use the textbook Mjezdunami, which I think a lot of people are familiar with. And you can find it at mjezdunami.org. I think I forgot to put it in my resource list just because I thought probably most people already know it. But um, I can type it in in a second. Um, it's a free online um, uh, textbook that was written by Linda Benedet. Bill Comer and Alice Muslova. So it's really great. We we use that um, in our first three semesters. Um, and that uh, textbook is divided into nine chapters and we do three chapters per semester for three semesters. So um, each semester is sort of divided into three. So I require uh, that students actually hand write like in cursive for about the first chapter and then at chapters two and further after that then it's sort of their choice I do still have assignments that I assign that they I ask them to write with their hand and if they choose to write in sort of what we might call print then that's their choice at that point but I do uh, you know try to talk to them about the fact that it's not usual for people who grow up uh, speaking Russian to write in print, that it's pretty much the uh, people, native speakers of Russian learn cursive right away. And so print is something that's sort of a, a unique maybe to our students. And I, I, I want them to know that so that they can make the choice on their own, whether they want to be try to conform to the native speaker uh, pattern or whether they whether they're choosing to be different, I guess. Um, and so I do require that they learn the cursive handwriting for the first part of the first semester. But then at some point, I say it's your choice after this. I do give them some assignments that it, where I require them to use their hands and write. Um, and, you know, it's a little awkward in the online classroom when it's a face-to-face -face or hybrid class I have them write it on paper and give it to me um, in, in the online classroom it's a little bit more awkward and so usually if they have a tablet they'll do it in a tablet app if they don't then they're welcome to take a picture of it and send it through our course management system and I give feedback on it that way it's it's a little harder to do than on paper but it's still possible um, so, so like I say, I do require them to do handwriting for a little bit, 
after that, I still want them to write using their hands. And um, as I have decided kind of which activities I want them to do in typing and which I want to do handwritten, I think about, for example, that for many people, uh, using handwriting helps you to remember things better. Maybe not everyone is that way, but um, there's some indication that that may be true for many people. And so, for example, if an activity has, say, new vocabulary that they haven't used before, then I might choose that one to have uh, to require them to actually handwrite. Whereas uh, with typing, I do have them learn to type uh, within the first semester. I think it's in chapter two, uh, so sort of the second third of that first semester. Um, and I agree with many of my colleagues who have said that I do feel that typing is more important than handwriting now and probably getting more and more important as time goes on, but I still think it's important for them to be able to read handwriting and at least have the choice of whether they want to learn uh, and use handwriting or not. Excellent, and that was something I thought about too uh, during yesterday's discussion when there was a lot of talk of not teaching handwriting. I personally am a very kinesthetic learner and I learned to write characters by rep repetition of physical writing. And I was wondering how that might impact students. But thank you for that. Really appreciate those insights. Uh, Heather, same question to you now talking about uh, handwriting. How much handwriting do you teach and use in your online classroom? Um, thank you. Uh, yeah, this is a question that, um, you know, I dealt with from from very, very early on. And in short, I don't teach handwriting. Um, I definitely was taught it. And when I went into development of this online course, I was definitely of the mind that, yes, I mean, they have to know Russian cursive. It's important, you know. Um, it just was such an integral part of my own education that I thought I, I definitely have to include this. And, you know, and when I did teach in person before developing the online class, it was it was something everybody learned. But because, like as Shannon said, in the online class, when it's strictly online, and this really was before um, tablets with the stylus were so, such in, in common use as they are now, um, it was so clunky and so difficult to convey uh, the lesson teaching, you know, this handwriting and to receive and then to um, mark it up. So at some point really early on, I decided, you know, maybe at least in the first year, this isn't necessary for an online student because given our, you know, our world today, most people communicate, like as we've all said, right? We mostly communicate by text and by email. And the most important thing, you know, regarding communication really is uh, keyboard input. So this is gonna be the way that I teach. I'm gonna just teach keyboard input. Um, part of that decision was based on our, our classes are actually semi-intensive and taking the time to teach handwriting when it, it couldn't be something that we could use for all of our lessons was going to be a, just an, an actual, a drag on, on the classes themselves. This is not me making any sort of statement that, you know, handwriting isn't important. Like you said, um, Sarah, I'm, I'm also a kinesthetic learner. When I make notes to myself, they're never digital. I all, I still write and I write in Russian cursive. Um, so it was kind of a hard decision for me to, to make this, to, to, to decide not to teach everybody in my classes handwriting. That said, I did create videos um, and include them in an optional module for students like teaching them handwriting and how like how each of the letters is formed in cursive and how they connect and with optional lessons. So if a student does wish to do them, they can. Um, and I and I tell all the students this at the beginning of my classes. Um, and of course, you know, it, handwriting is especially useful for anyone, um, especially anyone studying abroad, uh, even in countries um, outside of Russia and Ukraine itself, um, you know, they will encounter Russian script for graduate students of history, you know, doing archival research. It's incredibly important to know how to read 
at the very least. Um, so I don't teach it. Um, I focus on the keyboard and keyboard input, um, but I do offer it optionally because I, I also, I agree with Shannon. I, I would like for students to have that choice. Um, and like I said, I, I do it myself. Um, but given the state of the world right now and our communication mostly being, you know, text and email keyboard seems the most pressing. And when I, <laughs> when I, when I even when I teach my in-person classes, I don't teach cursive and I write in block letters on the board, which is a little odd, which is a little strange. And like Shannon said, it's it's not um it's not the norm, but it's uh it's what we do. Very interesting. I definitely see a lot of pros and cons on both sides, and there's just so many things to consider, especially because with especially writing curriculum we're often so limited we only have so much time with our students so it's it's definitely an interesting topic and i like that we were able to hear from educator shannon who does teach and then heather it's an optional thing it's available but it's not mandatory very interesting thank you for some great discussion on that um, and that might be a good segue into the next question talking a little bit about typing 